Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 149.5. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 146 to 154. Hey, this video here, number 149.5, is a response to Excel Magic Trick 118, where we did a reverse, way, a reverse two way lookup. Um, and here's the situation. We ran into a trouble in some circumstances with the formula we did in 118. So this is a solution to that. Now here was the setup. We had some times and some dates. And we wanted to put patients' names in anywhere we wanted. And then we had a list of names, one, two, three. And we counted the number of appointments using the count if function. So name one had two appointments. Name two, name three had zero, but name four had two appointments. And what we wanted to do was return all together in one formula the date and the time. So in essence, we had a date book where we filled in everyone's name, but somewhere else we had a complete list of patients and we wanted to have <coughs> dates and times. Now, when we did this formula in 118, when we had a name like this, and then in the next column we had a name lower down, the formula worked fine. But when we had a name uh, like this, and in the next column the name was uh, in a row right above it, the time value was, re uh, was returned incorrectly. So in essence, since we're doing a reverse two-way lookup, and don't even bother watching this video unless you go watch 118 first. Um, if we're doing a reverse two-way lookup, there's two things about this uh, video here. We have duplicates, so there's name one, name one. So there, we have to deal with the fact that there's duplicates. And we have to deal with the fact that when we're returning the column header, which is the date, we need a different formula than when returning the row header, which is the time. And that's because you may not always get the names in this order. Sometimes you may get them in this order. Now. Um, in the video we just did a couple, uh, the last video, 149, we saw an easier formula for this. If you don't have duplicates like this, then it's a much easier formula. Okay. Video 118, the, the column header formula worked, but the row header formula didn't work. Here's the column header formula, and again, you go back and watch that video. We did that one, and it worked fine. But now we need to do a slightly different uh, formula. And let's click over here and create our new formula for the row header. And then we can simply take that formula, that formula, and combine them all in one formula. Equals if columns. And now I'm going to say G23, because we're going to look right here. Dollar sign G23 colon G23, close parentheses. So that's the part that uh, asks whether it's appointment one or two. Is less than or equal to. And now I'm going to click on this. This is the count. And I'm going to hit F4 uh, three times, because I need the dollar sign in front of the column. So when copying this way, it's locked, but not down. And then that's the logical test. Comma, and the value we want, if true, is our index, because we need to look up, according to this reverse two-way lookup, we need to take this and then look up a value there. So for index, we'll use index, and then highlight these times, which are row headers. Hit the F4 key. And then comma, and now we need a row number. And that's what we want here. We need to say what row is in it. So for example, for name four, we need to have row two here. And then it would return uh, that 9 AM. So the row number. And we're going to have to use match. And what are we going to match? We're going to match this person's name. And you be sure to have the dollar sign in front of the B23 there, the B. Comma. Now, the lookup array, this is going to be the weird part of it, but our goal here is to return either this, this, or this. And we're going to create this lookup array with an index function. And the, uh, the array we're going to look at is this whole value, and then hit the F4 key. And now you're going to have to type comma to get to the next argument. And for index, we're here. There's the whole array. You need to put a 0 here for the row number. Now what 0 does is then it eliminates the rows, and it will only return this whole column of values, or this whole column, or this whole column. So then we type a comma. 
The column number is similar to what we did in video uh, 118, where we used the small and if construction. So we will do small and then if. And now we're going to ask. This whole range here, F4, to lock it, is equal to, and then we click on our name, F4, F4, F4. Those are going to return trues and falses, so then we say comma, and the value of true is going to be a column. Now this is weird because we're trying to find a row number, but remember we need to, in the context of this um, index right here, we need to return this column, this column, or this column of values, which then gets dumped into the match. So we need to ask about these columns here. C-O-L-M, the column. Highlight that. F4 close parentheses, minus column of that, F4, close parentheses, plus 1. Now, when we close parentheses here, that's a close parentheses on the if. And you can see, just like in the last video, when you highlight this little column construction, in, in essence what it does is it takes uh, column 3, 4, 5, subtracts 3's from all those numbers and adds 1 back, which gives us 1, 2, 3. But if you hit F9 here, you can see it gives us 1, 2, 3. I'm going to control Z. And then the whole if, or uh, the small, highlight just the if to there and get all of that, and then hit F9. You can see how it gives us a 1, a false, a false. False, 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 two, one. That relates to the fact that uh, name one then comes in here, false, two, false. And those are the column numbers, which we're trying to get from the index function. I'm going to control Z. Now we need to add the second uh, argument of the small, which is comma, and then this columns here. And that way, that's because we have duplicates. So I'm going to copy it um, over to appointment 2. It'll take the second smallest value. Now I'm going to close parentheses on the small, and this screen tip does come in handy. And now we get to the next uh, um, screen tip, which is for index. And there we've just created our columns, so we can close parentheses on that. And now if you were to highlight this whole index and hit F9, you can see it's a very clever way of getting name 000. And that is our first column, which for our first appointment is what we want. So there, our goal for this index was to get that. And it was a strange way to get a column of values, but it worked. Control-Z. Okay, so now we're, and you know, you get lost when you're doing a big formula like this, but look at this. Now we can see that the next thing we're ex expecting is the array. Well, we just did that, so I'm going to comma, and finally I need to put a match type because that first little thing we're looking up is name one. So we have to type comma and then zero for exact match. Close parentheses on the match. The screen tip's polite. It says, hey, we got our row number. Well, we don't need a column number, so we can just close parentheses. Now we're back to our if, and that's the value of true, but now we have to type a comma and then double quote, double quote for blank, because that's the thing that turns it off when there's no appointments. Close parentheses, and there it is, that big, huge formula. Right there will work. Now we'll control, shift, enter, and copy it over, and then copy it down. And let's see if it actually works. It should be 9 and 8 for name 4. And sure enough, it's 9 and 8. And so that works. And then to put it all together, just we did, and you'll have to go back and watch that other video. This video is just to see the, the part of the formula that didn't re return the right row header. But if you click here or expand your formula bar up here, you can see that same formula we did uh, in... 1118, except for this part right here, is the part we just did. Further, if you want, you can go over um, at our uh, at my web, the website. There's always the finished version, so you go look at the formulas. I've amended the formulas in tricks 107 to 119, the finished file. So if you go look at this, this now has the correct formula there also. All right, we'll see you next trick.